Well, hello, Monica here from OnlineBoutiqueBoss.com. Today, I am going to break down the first five steps to setting up your online boutique website. Now, before I go down that list, I do want to mention <laughs> that yes, I am expecting a baby. And I realized I have not mentioned it in any of my most recent videos. And I wanted to share the news with you. I'm so excited and happy. And I did share it with those of you months ago over on Instagram and those of you on the Online Boutique Boss newsletter, but I just didn't get a chance to mention it here. I think because we just get straight into business boutique conversation, um, but I'm excited to now finally share with you how happy I am and I'm really looking forward to this next part of my life being an online boutique boss mama. Now, I will be taking some time off. I don't know how long that's going to be, but there are plenty of videos here for you to catch up on, maybe rewatch for the second or third time, but there are some videos that I have planned that I will be posting before I take some time off, so you can look forward to those. And one more thing, one more thing I want to say is thank you to those of you who did know the news and reached out to me and just shared your excitement for me, and I really, really, truly appreciate your love and support. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Okay, the first five steps to setting up your online boutique website. Now, there is a step before the official step one, and that is to choose your e-commerce platform that will be hosting your online boutique website. So I have tried many different platforms throughout the years as a boutique owner myself, and I personally use and highly recommend Shopify. Now, Shopify is dedicated really to those of us who are e-commerce businesses and there's so many great features and tools and services that you can integrate to your Shopify store to really help you scale your boutique. Now I am a partner with Shopify and I have this fancy sign up page for you. So if you go to onlineboutiqueboss.com forward slash Shopify, you can get a free trial. And I also have a little video I filmed and all this good stuff. So <laughs> once you sign up for your e-commerce platform, then we can move on to step number one. Step number one is to reserve your domain name. This is your website address, your myboutiquename.com or .ca if you're in Canada. But this is the link that you will direct your audience to. So keep in mind, this is not the generic domain name that you get when you sign up for, say, Shopify, where you may see it as myboutiquename.myshopify.com. That is not where you want to direct your customers to because one, it's way too long of a website address. Nobody is going to remember that in a casual conversation when you're talking about your boutique. And also, it just doesn't look professional. One of the easiest things you can do, even when you're just starting out to really showcase that I am a legitimate brand is to have a custom domain name. Now, this may seem a bit obvious, an obvious step for some of you, but I wouldn't mention it if I didn't see this happen over and over again. Now, the reason why this needs to be your first priority is because at this point, you should have already registered your business name, you have your business license, and you wanna make sure all of that continues to align with your branding, but also so you can get the website name that you prefer because it might be taken. And if it is taken, you may have to pay a premium price to buy back that domain name, or maybe it might not just be available for you to purchase then in that case, you may have to rework or rethink your business name. Now, the good news here is that this is a simple process and I will leave some resources down below where you can get your custom domain name. Step number two is to set up your coming soon page. 
So while you're working on the back end of your online store and you're not ready to have it open to the public just yet, you'll want to have a coming soon page for your audience to reference. So on this page, you'll want to include a few sentences that describes the type of brand that you're opening, also your anticipated boutique launch date, as well as a call to action to sign up for your email list, which spoiler is the next step. Now to set this up in Shopify, click on online store and then preferences and scroll all the way at the bottom and you'll see the password protected page. Add your password, a message to your visitors, and Shopify also automatically includes an email signup section, which we'll talk about next. And that leads us to step number three, which is to have a section for your email signup form. You want to collect email addresses before you launch your boutique. This way you have a place to build a relationship with your audience, to speak to them directly, to build up the hype and the anticipation for your upcoming launch. So do not skip this step. If you do, you will lose out on the opportunity to get those first day customers. And like I mentioned, Shopify does offer a section on your coming soon page to collect those email addresses, but you may want to also use a dedicated email marketing platform to set up a welcome automation sequence. Now that is a whole other topic and a whole other video in itself that I would be happy to do a video and tutorial on in the future. But for now, make sure you have a place to collect those email addresses and to build the relationship with your potential customers. Step number four is to write out your home page meta description. Now meta descriptions are what are shown on search engines like Google. So when you have a detailed homepage meta description, it can help increase clicks to your website because you're clearly describing your type of products that you sell to your target customer. You want to choose keywords that describe your products and brand, but also keywords that are commonly used in search. So for instance, if your boutique, your niche is children's clothing, so you want to break that down even further and describe, okay, what type of children's clothing? So you can say something along the lines of, I, we sell, our brand sells children's organic cotton clothing made in the U.S. So continue thinking about words that your target customer would be using. So another example would be, let's say you sell jewelry. Okay. Do you sell handmade jewelry? What type of jewelry? Is it gold filled or is it women's dainty style jewelry? So take those keywords and you want to use it in a sentence. So instead of you want to avoid using keywords and just have keyword after keyword after keyword that can look spam like and you might even your site might even not even show up in a website search because Google does not like that type of what's called keyword stuffing. So you wanna make sure when you're taking and you're breaking down your keywords that you put it into a sentence. Something that you would say naturally out loud and it sounds like a natural sentence that you're describing your brand. Now you wanna take advantage of customizing your meta descriptions on each of your pages on your website. So your collection pages, your product pages, your blog pages. And remember, not only is this to help describe that first look in the search engine that describes that specific page, but also for search engine optimization and your SEO. So keep in mind, each of your pages are going to look a little bit different because it's describing that exact collection page. So for children's boutique, let's say you have a collection dedicated to newborn pajamas. <laughs> and in those keywords, you can take, take some of that newborn pajamas, organic cotton, and put that into that specific meta description. Now, this may seem like a lot, 
but just start with your home page meta description and then try to get into the habit of doing this practice for each of your pages moving forward. So in Shopify, again, click on online store and then preferences. And the first section you'll see is where you can edit your homepage title and meta description. And lastly, step number five is to set up Google Analytics. Now Google Analytics gives you a deeper look into your insights, your conversions on your website, and this does take some time to gather that information when you're a brand new website. So you want to set this up now and then come back to it after you launch and wait a few months, come back to it and you'll be able to view some of those reportings and kind of analyze how you can improve your store and see there's a lot of different details that you can see that's going to help you try to improve your boutique website moving forward. So this step is just simply setting up Google Analytics and coming back to it down the line in the future. And now you have the first five steps to setting up your online boutique website and it's only going to get better from here. So thank you so much again for watching this video. If you want to learn more about how to build and create a high converting online boutique, a beautiful website you're proud of, come on over and join the waitlist for my signature program, the Online Boutique Boss course. We have a dedicated module to your website. So if you go to onlineboutiqueboss.com, forward slash join. You can wait for the next enrollment period. I would love to have you. So thank you again. We talked about a lot of different things here. I know it can kind of feel overwhelming to get things rolling, get things started with your boutique business, but hopefully these tips helped you and I can't wait to see you in the next video.